This is a continuation of our uh, gluing and bonding series, and this one's specifically about gluing flexible filaments together. Um, I've been working quite a bit with printing and setting up my machines to print flexibles. Uh, you'll see some of my previous videos talking about how to print flexibles, and I had the big challenge of gluing. Uh, most solvents don't eat into the flexibles. Acetone and MEK don't do a very good job of eating into it. Epoxies don't stick to it, they're so flexible they tend to peel off of it. Um, and so I started doing some research. I do want to give a special thanks to Adam Hamill who pointed out the organic solvents to me which we will be covering in a second. Uh, before that let me just tell you which filaments I'm printing on, which ones I've had success with, with and which ones we will be gluing. First of all, uh, I do use quite a bit the Sane Smart TPU. Um, I also use the Maker Flex TPEE, and then of course the Ninja Flex TPU. I use all three of these for different reasons. The Ninja Flex is the softest by far. It's a lot of fun, but it's one of the hardest ones to print with since it is so soft. It's hard to push it through the extruder and hot end. Uh, the Maker Flex TPE is tough and rugged. I mean, here you can see the Ninja Flex squishing and the Maker Flex, I can't compress it, but it's really, really resistant. You could pull this thing all day and not pull off the, the tentacles on this test piece. So I like the TPEE, and for somewhere in between, something flexible yet pretty easy to print with, I do like the Sane Smart TPU. Um, I printed a bunch of test pieces with it, which we'll go over in a second. I'll show you some print and application. Here's one that I really needed to figure out how to, to glue. I was working on a new headset for our VR unit. The outside is PETG shell that then uh, gets bolted onto a ratchet mechanism and I needed a printed cushion for the inside. And since the cushion would be made of a few different layers, I needed to find some kind of a glue or solvent that would bond this together. So that was my main objective. Look for my other videos to find out how to print this good of quality in TPU. And let's get down to it. So, I printed up a bunch of little test plaques out of the Sane Smart TPU. Uh, I did print these on a flat PEEK sheet with no glue stick, hairspray, slurry, no other contaminant on it. I just used the PEEK sheet and our flexible build platform to print these straight on so that therefore when I do glue we don't have any other contaminants ruining the test. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to both surfaces and I'm going to be a little bit abundant and go outside of it that way after a period of time we will see if it distorts the piece, if it has any color hazing, if it has any defects. So I'll purposely be sloppy and go outside. We'll clamp these together, we'll give them something like 12 hours and then we'll see the results tomorrow. So. The glues that I will be going over, the first one we'll start with is the Loctite 406. Now this is specially made for plastics and rubbers and I couldn't believe it that it actually gave me great results. It's not flexible, it is a glue, therefore if you flex it too much you're going to break the bond. But we'll start with the Loctite 406 and I'm just going to apply it just by making a big abundant glob here and I'm going to go outside of the, the realm because we do want that excess. And I'm going to smush this along and I'm just going to temporarily clamp that right like that. And I'll put that aside. That's A. Okay, so now we're getting into the organic solvents and this next one is commonly referred to as THF and it's a tetrahydrofurane. And like I said, it's an organic solvent. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to apply this abundantly to both plaques. Once again, I do recommend using a respirator and gloves and don't get this all over your hands. It's not great to breathe. I'll just try to be brief and aggressive. I'm putting quite a bit on both pieces so I can ensure a good bond. As these are solvents, the thing that we're looking for is to melt these two pieces of plastic together, basically to weld them together. So I will put those together and put a small clamp on it and we'll put that aside. Okay, my next one is D 
DMSO, and if I'm forced to say it, it's dimethyl sulfoxide. Um, that's this one right here, another organic solvent. Most of these you can buy on Amazon, and you don't need special permits or any crazy licensing to, to be able to buy. I'll give the links for these as well. I tried to find the organic solvents that weren't so expensive that they break the bank. Um, so I think all of these are pretty cost effective. I'm going to apply this once again very abundantly inside and outside of the limit of the glue area so we could see if it does create any surface defects. Okay, that is DMSO. Now we're going to move to DMF, dimethyl formaldehyde. Has that word formaldehyde in there, so biology students will remember the smell of this. Um, quite stinky. And this one is DMF. There is DMF contained in many different other solvents, especially the ones for PVC, for um, pipe, uh, pipe preparation solvents. Okay, and I will put these two together quickly. For some reason I did that upside down, but we still have the D showing. Okay, there's our D. That's DMF. And now we'll go into a mixed product of organics and non-organic solvents. So this is a common product that you'll find, the P70 primer by Weldon. This is a combination of THF, similar to the original THF. It also has MEK, which is a standard solvent, aggressive solvent in there. Acetone, which we most of us all know is a solvent for good for cleaning and welding. And cyclohexone, hexanone. I don't even know what that is, but another big chemical name. And we'll test that one out. This is simple, easy to buy over the counter. Oh, it does come with its own little applicator, which is always nice, especially for all those PVC things that are made for the plumbers who need to be able to apply this easily. It's quite thin. It's a lot thinner than some of the other PVC welding chemicals. Okay, so we'll put that under a clamp. Ooh, this stuff's really moving around. I think this is really melting it more than the other. Let me move it off so we can see. Make sure that we can see enough of, I'm gonna put a little drop outside of it so we make sure we can see the effect on the piece. A few moments later. Okay, so these uh, samples have been drying overnight, and like you know, we tested one a CA glue and four organic solvents. And let's have a look at what the results are one by one. So the first one we tested was the Loctite 406. Um, this is specifically made, like I said, for plastics and rubbers. There isn't very much hazing. Hazing is usually a very white cloud around there. There is a little bit of staining, but I'm sure if you use this with care and caution, it works well. The bond is pretty darn amazing. I'm pulling as hard as I can. Where I didn't put glue on the edges, it peels. The peel will probably break it because it is a rigid glue, not a flexible one. But in sheer and in direct solicitation of force, we don't have any breakage. So let's go ahead and break with peel. So the only disadvantage of using a rigid glue like a CA could be that since this is flexible, if they did not weld together, we can have a situation of peel, and peel is one of the worst solicitations of force that we could do to a bond. And there we are, we are getting it to break with peel. So. I would say probably don't use the CA if you're going to use a piece of uh, rubber that's really going to be a, under a lot of peel forces, but if you are, use it around the whole perimeter. Don't give it the opportunity to lift up. And this stuff is still strong. Even though I just ripped half of the strength, I can't rip this apart. So that is the result of the Loctite 406. I think it's a great result. The nice thing is it's also instantaneous. It's a great way to tack something in place and then further glue it later. Let's move over to THF, one of the organic solvents. Um, there is no staining. There's a little bit of shininess right here, 
I think that's just because it, it basically is a solvent. So it's eating the surface. You could probably use that also to make this whole thing shiny by smoothing a little bit on with a buffing cloth. Um, let's see how the grip is. First of all, just in sheer amazing. In peel, I'm going to start with areas that did not get held down. This has been welded together. It's basically fused the two rubber pieces together. Remember, this is not a glue. It's a solvent that melts the TPU on one side and melts the TPU on the other side and forms it together. I can't rip this apart. I'm trying full force. Um, so, in summary, the, the THF, I think, is a wonderful solvent, a great choice. Let's look at the other organic solvents. This is the DMSO. Unfortunately, you can see it did create white hazing. Uh, unless it has some kind of a mechanical property that's so much further superior to the THF, I guess I would not use this for TPUs. Um, that white hazing could be a problem in the future. We could try to get it off, but I'm not quite sure if I'd use this. Let's test this out first of all. In sheer, very strong. In peel, nope, I'm able to break that joint. It did grip, but I was able to break it. So I think the DMSO is less effective on the TPU than the other glues we've tried until now. So let's put this one in the back. We're going to try a straight DMF. Um, this one seems like there could be a slight shadow of a haze, or it's just simply that it shined a little bit the plastic where it ate it away with the solvent. Um, in sheer, very, very strong. In peel, Pretty darn strong. I seem to be able to get under it. No, I can't. So, I'd probably put this right on par with the strength of the THF. This is DMF. Might have a little bit more, if I look at those two in comparison, this one had very little staining. That one has slightly more, but I guess it's not accurate of enough of a test sample to know. But I'd say so far the THF and DMF are really successful. Now let's have a look at the Weld On P70 primer, which was a combination of multiple materials. That was uh, THF, MEK acetone, and cyclohexanone. Um, it didn't create any staining, which is wonderful. It's very strong. Let's see what it's like in peel. Okay, let's ignore that. It did break apart. So, the winners are the Loctite for a quick tack glue. And for solvents to melt your two pieces together, the THF and DMF seem all to be wonderful solutions to bonding your uh, rubber products, your TPU products. Now I will say, if you have to do TPU to T TPU, I would probably go the route of solvent. If you have to go TPU to another material, I would probably go the route of CA because this will work on bonding to multiple materials where these will only bond to materials that these solvents will eat as well. Thank you, I hope this is helpful and if it is, Please let me know in the comments and subscribe and like. Thank you.